discussed about how to activate the external hardware interrupts. So there are two types of activating uh, the external hardware interrupt. One is low level uh, activation and falling edge activation. That is we call it as edge triggered interrupt or level triggered interrupt. So both are like in case of level triggered interrupt, it is going to trigger the interrupt on the low level signal. In case of edge triggered interrupt, so it is going to check for high to low transition. That is whenever there is a falling edge detection, then it is going to generate an interrupt. Now, so I said that level triggered interrupt or edge triggered interrupt. So how to decide that? So what is the default mode in 805? On reset, by default, the interrupts on 8051 that is the external hardware interrupts are level triggered interrupts. So how to change that level triggered interrupts into edge triggered interrupt is by programming the timer control register. So this timer control register we have already uh, discussed this timer control register in the previous module while discussing the timers chapter. So the timer control register what we have in short we call it as the TCON register. The TCON register uh, again it's an 8 bit register and it is bit addressable register. So out of the complete 8 bits the lower 4 bits are dedicated for the interrupt application and upper 4 bits are dedicated for timers application. And this upper 4 bits we have already discussed with respect to the previous model timer overflow flag and timer uh, run control bit. Since we have the two timers, timer 0 and timer 1, so we have uh, two bits for timer 0 and two bits for timer 1. So the operation of those we have discussed in the previous module. So if you have any doubt, you can refer to the videos of timer uh, lecture series. Okay. Now we will be discussing only with respect to the interrupts part. So out of the lower four bits, what we have? So out of that, two bits are dedicated for. Uh, external hardware interrupt 0 and the upper 2 bits are dedicated for external hardware interrupt 1. So by default in 8051 all the external hardware interrupts will be level triggered that is whenever there is a low level signal on the IND 0 or IND 1 pin then the interrupt will be activated. So how to change that low level activation to a edge trigger activation for that so we have two bits here, IT0 and IE0. So what this IT0 will say? That IT0 is going to define what is the type of external interrupt activation. That is, as we have discussed, whether it is a level trigger or edge trigger. So the IT0 bit or the IT1 bit is going to decide by what way I am activating the interrupts. So if the value of IT0 or 1 is 0, then it indicates that the interrupts are low level activated. That is, whenever there is a low level signal on the INT0 or INT1 pin, the corresponding interrupt will be activated. So if I am going to make these particular bits 1, then they are going to become edge trigger interrupt. Okay. So how to program that? So by programming the timer control register. The timer control register D0 and D2 bit. So these two bits, by configuring these two bits, I can make the external hardware interrupts to be level triggered or edge triggered. So the ITX in general, I can write them as ITX. This X can take value of 0 or 1 because we have two interrupts that is uh, uh, INT0 and INT1. So, by making this INT, ITX bit 0, both the external hardware interrupts will be configured as low level. This is by default. So, this is the default mode. Okay. So, if I want both the interrupts to be edge trigger, then I am going to make this ITX both bits with 1. So even I can make 1 level trigger and one edge trigger because we have two different bits to configure ok so if the value of it0 is 0 then the int0 interrupt will be low level trigger if int0 value is 1 then the int0 interrupt is going to be negative edge trigger that is a falling edge so similarly the same holds for it1 
so if i t 1 is 0 then i n t 1 is going to be low level activation if i n t 1 is 1 then the i n t 1 pin is going to be a edge trigger that is the falling edge trigger so the next bit is IE0 and IE1. So again in general I can write them as IEX where X can take a value of 0 or 1. So depending on which interrupt, okay, whether it is an interrupt 0 or interrupt 1. So this IE0 bits will be set by the microcontroller whenever the microcontroller is going to detect a high to low signal for the corresponding pin. Whenever the INT 0 or the INT 1 pin or the INT 0 or INT 1 pin there is a high to low signal then the IE 0 or IE 1 bits will be set to 1 depending on which pin they detected the high to low signal. Suppose for example if INT 0 pin has detected a high to low transition. In that case, IE 0 bit will be set to 1. If high to low transition is detected on the INT 1 bar pin, then IE 1 will be set to 1. Okay, whenever there is a high to low transition, then during that time the corresponding bits will be set to 1, depending on whether it is on the port pin. 3.2 or 3.3 okay so cpu is going to set that particular bits to 1 they are cleared automatically so they are going to clear automatically after interrupt is processed so we know that whenever there is an interrupt signal so microcontroller is going to stop whatever it is doing and then it jumps to that particular isr and executes that isr and comes back to the main program where it was interrupted okay so while returning back to the main program so the ie 0 and ie 1 bits will be set to 0 automatically so we are not going to manually make it 0 whenever there is a high to low transition they are going to become 1 and then interrupt will be executed and after the interrupt is executed they are going to become 0 so this ie 0 and ie 1 bits are also called as interrupt in service flag bits because if it is 1 it is understood that a interrupt is being in service if it is 0 it is understood that the interrupt has already finished so uh, 8051 is ready to accept new interrupts so that's why the ie 0 and ie 1 flag bits are also known as interrupt in service flag bits so they say that whether the int, uh, a presently an external hardware interrupt signal has activated and the ISR is in execution or not. So they are going to give the information above a ISR is in running state or it has been finished. Okay. So the execution of the RETI instruction makes them low. So this is what even in the previous uh, I have explained. Detection of falling edge makes IE0 and IE1 high. And execution of RETI instruction makes low. So once we execute the RETI instruction, what it indicates? It indicates that that particular ISR is finished execution because RETI is the last instruction of every interrupt service protein. So IE0 and IE1 is going to become 1 when there is a falling edge detected over the INT0 or INT1 pin depending on which pin. Okay, and then they are going to become low once you execute the RETI instruction. So that is with respect to the timer control register. So the timer control register with respect to the interrupts, the lower four bits of the timer control register are dedicated for interrupts and that too particularly for defining external hardware interrupts. So how the external hardware interrupts are activated? either by the level trigger mode or by the edge trigger mode. So that will be defined by making use of the IT0 or IT1 pin. And whenever there is a high to low transition, whenever there is a high to low transition that is a falling edge is detected, IE0 and IE1 is going to become 1. 
IE zero and IE one is going to be become zero after the execution of interim service subroutine. So that is about the timer control register.